Hello and welcome to How's That. Good morning to you and I have got as always uh, Vijay Lokpali on the other side of this call. Good morning Vijay. Yeah, good morning Radharaman. Um, uh, I don't know if you enjoyed the game last night but there is one aspect which I like we'll discuss in the show. It was tough to enjoy the game uh, as a cricketing contest uh, Vijay. I must be very honest with you. Until the Delhi Capitals was batting it was great to watch. Um, then of course the bowlers did a terrific job for Delhi Capitals to put them on top of the table, but uh, it was not very good watching uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore attempt that chase. Uh, it, it did not make for great viewing at all. And RCB still continues to grapple with some problems which, which have continued to dog the team. Both the Royal Challengers defeats have come in Dubai and both of them have been very, by very, very big margins. There was a 90 plus runs defeat uh, at the hands of uh, Kings Kingsleven Punjab. And last night it was 59 runs against uh, the Delhi Capitals. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the batting when it is chasing, even though Virat Kohli is known as the king of the chase. Yeah, especially last night. He, he, he did speak about the fact that the due factor uh, kind of influenced uh, his decision to, uh, to bat, uh, to, to field first. So uh, there are certain, like I said, there are certain things which he has to sort out. And uh, maybe in the next couple of games, otherwise time is running out for RCB. What we can do is uh, show how A.B. De Villiers, uh, one of his trusted players, one of his most important players, sprang up to his defence at the post-match press conference when he was asked about why Royal Challengers Bangalore decided to field first on winning the toss. Well, the last game Chennai won chasing. Um, we felt that uh, we were also against, we played against Mumbai our last game here. Um, we got a very good total of 200 plus and uh, Mumbai were, were very close to chasing that down. Um, it wasn't as dewy tonight. I don't think it really got wet in the second innings at all, um, which is not an excuse. As I said before, we didn't bat well tonight and uh, never strung together any partnerships. But we were expecting it to get a bit wet, um, which would have made it very difficult for the Delhi bowlers. And um, look, it was a fair, fair game. It was dry throughout the 40 overs of cricket and they were the better team today. So. Um, but that, that was the reason why we decided to chase. We were thinking that the Jew might come and make it really tricky for them to, to control the run chase uh, for us. Having won the toss and asked Delhi Capitals to bat first, a formidable batting lineup from Delhi Capitals, Virat Kohli would have expected his bowling lineup, uh, which is perhaps the weak link, to deliver the goods last night. Yes, but once. Prithvi Shah was getting his shots right and Shikhar Dhawan was looking to play a longer innings than he has in this tournament. Uh, Virat Kohli's uh, problems were bound to increase. Uh, Navdeep Saini was off colour. I mean, he was being clobbered uh, in, in this game like he has not been in this tournament. And he was he was a bull shot. I, I thought uh, the brilliant start by Prithvi Shah kind of dictated the course of the contest. Vijay, there was one delivery that stood out in the mind that uh, even some 12 hours and more later, I can think of the ball that uh, Siraj bowled to get Prithvi Shah out. It was a very, very good bouncer. Perhaps Royal Challengers Bangalore fast bowlers did not make the best use of the track yesterday. They did not. And, uh, but I think you will also understand the fact that uh, Prithvi Shah was playing his shots. I mean, he was not... Uh, holding himself back and Shikhar Dhawan also he did come up with a couple of uh, forceful shots which which put the bowlers on the back foot and here yes you're talking about the bouncer very good bouncer it was but maybe Shikhar Dhawan would have dealt it differently uh, Prithvi Shah was in a very poor position to play that shot someone like A.B. De Villiers uh, Vijay con uh, conceded that uh, the Royal Challengers Bangalore bowlers did not read the pitch too well they took time to adapt the Let's watch what he has to say. And I felt we were very slow to adapt with um, our defensive bowling. Um, it was one of those wickets where you needed to utilise the conditions, really uh, bowl it into the deck, 
to get a bit of purchase out of it. I felt we um, were a little bit slow to adapt and uh, unfortunately leaked, I would say, probably about 20 over par. We had an opportunity to really put pressure on them and unfortunately we just didn't execute very well. Um, I, as I said, I don't think we utilised the conditions as well as we could have. Um, but it's one of those days. Um, we, we didn't get our skills absolutely right. Uh, we dropped a catch in the field, a little bit of slackiness in the in the field as well, a couple of fumbles here and there, which cost us ultimately 20 to 30 runs, um, which could have been a different story in the second apartment. But then again, we, we didn't bat well at all tonight. So just a bad day at the office, I'd say. While we leave Royal Challengers Bangalore to sort their bowling issues out, Vijay, and, and perhaps some of the batting issues as well, Let's focus a little bit on the batting of the Delhi Capitals. It was outstanding, was it? A very, very good opening stand, followed by Marcus Toynus playing the terrific knock toward the end of their innings. Yes, good start by Shaw. And I think the finish by Stoinis. I mean, Stoinis is turning out to be uh, the most entertaining, the most devastating batsman uh, of, of, of the tournament because he can now look the kind of batsman he can who can bat at any position and when he's in front of you what can the bowler do he can just bowl and pray because uh, he's he's getting he's he's smashing even the good deliveries so stoinis is, is is indeed a treat to watch and once again last night he showed what he can do with this beautiful combination of power and timing uh, stoinis and rishabh pant when they were batting together uh, vijay i was reminded of the pollard Hardik Pandya partnership. Uh, it does look like uh, both of them, uh, Stoinis and Rishabh Pan, can be devastating at the end. Of course, we have always known that Rishabh Pan can be terrific at the death. Marcus Stoinis, coming good with the bat, has only added muscle to Delhi Capitals batting. Definitely, he has, and he's all muscles. I mean, when he when he comes up to bat, he is enjoying his batting. Uh, no doubt about that. And look at the smile. I mean, he smashes the ball and 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 comes up with the smile just to tell the bowler, you know, that he has read his ball very well and he is one step ahead of what he's going to bowl. It's always good to hear a dressing room perspective on a cricketer. And let's watch what Ravi Chandra Nashwin has to say about Stoinis and about Prithvi Shah as well. Look, I think uh, he's become extremely strong. That's the first thing, uh, as far as Marcus goes. And uh, he's been playing the IPL for different teams over the last couple of seasons. And uh, he's obviously improved over the last two years. And finally, uh, a really, really uh, excellent Stoinis has reached Delhi Capitals. And that's what I must say. Uh, the team environment has been great for him to go out there and express himself. And uh, Stoinis has been phenomenal. And Dubai being our home ground, we play seven games here. And uh, Stoinis has been amazing in the last two games that we played at Dubai. So, I look forward to keeping my fingers crossed for him. Look, Prithvi is a phenomenal talent. And uh, I don't think we need to be talking too much about techniques of batsmen here. Because sometimes, uh, technique of batsmen is just overrated, I feel. Uh, everybody has got a unique technique. And Prithvi hits the ball. When, when Prithvi hits the ball, the ball makes a lovely sound of the bat. And he's a really, really special talent. Uh, he can just... It just depends on which side of the bed he wakes up and how well he plays. He's been hitting the ball beautifully in the last couple of games. And I'm looking forward to better things from him as the tournament goes on. Ashwin, of course, uh, giving credit to the batsman. But between him and Akshar Patel, I thought they pulled the match back very, very strongly in Delhi Capital's favour when Royal Challengers set out to bat. Yes, Raja Raman. I mean, you have, you have read it very well. And, I, and to me, I think they are the pair to watch. Slow bowling pair. I mean, if you see, uh, they complement each other very well. Off spin, left arm spin. And Akshar Patel is a much underrated and a very brave bowler. I mean, he's always... He, again, the captain throws him the ball at all difficult points and he, he willingly accepts the challenge. So, and last night, he was at his best. I mean, he deserved the man of the match. Akshar Patel, of course, comes across as a good student of the game, uh, having to step in at the very last minute, perhaps, uh, because Amit Mishra was ruled out of the tournament. He did a very good job of filling up. He took some help from the Delhi Capitals batsman to understand the nature of the track and then adapted his bowling accordingly. He varied the pace and in tandem with Ashwin was a great sight to watch. Yeah, and the fact that he was bowling to someone like Virat Kohli, keeping him quiet and winning the initial battle and then finally the match for uh, Delhi Capitals. There was also a very telling moment, uh, Vijay. There was Ravichandra and Ashwin who could have run out uh, the very, 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 very lucky Aaron Finch 
He was dropped so many times, and then he was not run out by Ashwin at the non-striker's end. Um, this was quite unlike Ashwin. Perhaps he was heeding the call of Ricky Ponting not to run the non-striker out if he was attempting to steal a run. I know it's an unending debate. Much has been said about it. But uh, I think if I was Ashwin, I would run Finch out. I mean, it's, he, it, there is no question of giving a batsman a warning. You know, you don't. It's, it's a competition. The batsman knows what the rule is. And if he's, if he's, if there is an infringement, he has to be penalized. And uh, I would have been, I would back Ashwin to, to run out such batsmen who, who are backing too far. There was a tweet last night, uh, very quickly, Ashwin said that this would be the only warning that he would issue any batsman. Uh, but we got to see a different side of Ashwin. He's not known to give any quarter away to batsmen who are attempting to back up too far. Uh, Aaron Finch really got lucky last night. He said Finch is a good friend, but then uh, this is a competitive game and uh, Ashwin showed a different side of his personality in not running Finch out last night. Yes, and why should he hold himself back? I mean, it, this is, uh, it, it is very well known and it's easy for uh, people sitting outside and talk about spirit of the game. What about the batsman then? Is he, is he not flouting the spirit of the game by taking advantage? So I think, I think uh, there should be a clear law. Uh, I read somewhere some suggestion that the batsman should be fined runs, but uh, I think a bowler should be allowed to run them out. Uh, you have a very, very valid point and I subscribe to what you say because uh, when you talk about the spirit of the game, Vijay, it applies both to the batsman and to the bowler. Uh, you can't expect the bowler to be showing the spirit of the game when the batsman is actually stealing a few inches and instead of running 22 yards, he ends up running only about 20 yards or so because he has had a head start. I thought uh, Ashwin did really well last night. Ashwin's action last night, stem from the fact that he has respect for his team's coach, Ricky Ponting. But he seemed to have as much respect for Akshar Patel and the fact that he was man of the match gave Ashwin so much joy last night. Let's watch what Ashwin had to say about Akshar Patel. So sometimes uh, what happens in T20 cricket is we tend to blow up uh, images and uh, stats and numbers of bowlers who get the wickets in the purple cap, even likewise in the orange cap. And sometimes I feel it is a little too overrated in a game like T20 because it is somewhat like a football where uh, people are playing their roles. And one such player is Akshar, right? He's He always goes under the radar because he bowls those good overs. Uh, builds the pressure up for someone to get someone else to capitalize on the wicket. So uh, these are heroes that get really appreciated inside the dressing room for us in Delhi Capitals. And Ricky is very particular on that. And uh, we stick to the roles. And when you get appreciated, people want to hold on to their roles. As students of the game, I think it's only important that we discuss something that happened in the first and second over of the Royal Challengers Bangalore batting. Finch, of course, was dropped uh, first by Rabada. There was a simple pot and bowl chance. Poor chap, he managed to grasp that. And then, um, I think a couple of deliveries later, he attempted a drive and Rabada got the ball to just jag away a little bit. And Shikhar Dhawan was standing too far back, uh, did not get his hand to the catch. And then in the following over, when Andrich Noke was bowling, Shikhar Dhawan was, had moved forward so much and um, the catch flew to him at a rapid pace and at a height that he was not able to take the catch. Uh, I have always believed that wicket keepers decide where the slip fielders stand. And I think Rishabh Pant, despite having spent time at the crease and Shikhar Dhawan as well, did not gauge the pace of the pitch and uh, were not able to find the right spot to stand when these two bowlers were bowling with the new ball. And definitely, I mean, keeper, if you see, keeper feels the ball right through when it comes and hits his glove. So he is in probably uh, the best just to. Uh, to read the, the bounds and the pace of the pace. But what about the fielders? I mean, don't you know where you are standing? Are you not very close or are you too far? Uh, 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 there are times when you do stray away from your position, but not to the extent where you will not know the pace of the, uh, the ball when it travels to you for a catch. So the fielder also has a responsibility. And yes, wicket keeper is the one who should guide. Vijay, the other point I want to make uh, to you is something that we have been discussing constantly is the challenge that bowlers face in this tournament. The heat and humidity of the United Arab Emirates, as well as uh, the fact that many of them have not been bowling during lockdown. 
these two combine to present a challenge to the bowlers and we have already seen a number of injuries not the least of which being bhuvaneshwar kumar and amit mishra having to come out amit mishra of course uh, suffering an all field injury but uh, bhuvaneshwar kumar's injury uh, does does cause lots of concerns for other fast bowlers yes and i remember in one of the earlier shows you did raise this point of uh, uh, how will the, how are the bowlers going to cope with this challenge of uh, coming out of uh, uh, the covid situation where they haven't practiced and i'm not surprised but i do fear we are going to see a few more breakdowns if this is the trend uh, the, the the playing conditions and also the fact that they are not at their physical best i think the challenge will be for uh, physios and trainers to keep their fast bowlers in shape um, my eyes will particularly be on how jaspreet bumrah is handled and someone like mohammad shami two key bowlers for india india has already suffered a blow in the form of bhuvneshwar kumar uh, we don't know if ishant is 100% he played one game in the tournament so far but if india's premier fast bowlers are not nursed carefully it's going to be trouble ahead uh, of course the franchises are paying a fat sum of money for each of these cricketers but it's very important for bcci to keep this in mind because there is an important tour of australia coming ahead of the team i think i'm not worried on this account where the physios and the trainers they are maybe slightly overworked but they are very professional very efficient they have they'll have they have a challenge at hand and i'm sure they must be working very hard to keep these players uh, in 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 good in good fitness Vijay, before I bring in uh, our friend Raja Venkat into the discussion, I want to know from you what was the turning point, according to you? What was that one decisive moment in which the game turned uh, Delhi Capitals' way? For me, it was the first over that Akshar Patel bowled with with the new ball. More than the turning point, I would say the assault by Stoinis. It, it took the game away from RCB because it put them in a stage where. they would be batting under pressure right from the start you picked stoinis vijay let's see what uh, raja venkat former selector has to say about last night's game and let's see what he has to say about people like stoinis a walk in the park for delhi capitals today they amassed 196 runs in the 20 overs thanks to a blistering start by prithvi shaw and shikhar dhawan they played to a plan and they attacked the bowlers from ball 1 it was a treat to watch them play and then towards the end marcus stoinis played a remarkable innings of just 24 balls he reminds us of dhoni of old days when he used to come at the crease and just decimate the bowlers and then when they turned came to bowl delhi capitals all the bowlers bowled well the spinners were excellent but the pick of the bowlers was robada he was simply fantastic but i must say one thing there was no need for ab to play a shot like that he and virat if they were there for 20 overs they could have possibly taken the match through but he threw his wicket away and then it was left to virat to fight it all alone there is a very interesting question that has popped up vijay it is not mine it has come to us from vidya sagar ayappan one of our regular watchers and he's got a very interesting point to make uh, let's try and address that but let's first watch what his question is all about they have at least two sub optimal players in shikhar dhawan and uh, shimron netmeyer my question is at what point of time as a winning team look to tamper with the winning combination and have the guts to make like for like replacements uh, waiting in the wings for example there is a rahani who can easily come in for dhawan and a kimo paul who can easily come for hetmeyer left handed yes but like for like replacement and a strong team can get even stronger uh, with these changes thank you very much vidya sagar it is a very very fair question that uh, vidya sagar has asked us uh, what does a team like delhi capitals do it is on song it is on it is on top of its game does it give someone like a shikhar dhawan a break uh, we will focus only on shikhar dhawan uh, i think karhane world class player no doubt about that but i don't think the delhi capitals will want to disturb the left right combination at the top of the order that is one 
Two, it will also want to give Shikhar Dhawan a longer run because he is an explosive batsman and he can win a match on his own and he can demoralize the opposition bowling. And I don't think Rahane uh, does fit that bill. Of course, Prithvi Shah is playing brilliantly at the start, but you would want to give Shikhar Dhawan a longer run. And I'm, I'm not sure what the Delhi Capitals management is thinking. It has perhaps told Shikhar Dhawan to go easy while Prithvi Shah is firing on all cylinders. I agree, uh, but I definitely feel sorry for Ajinkya Rahane. He was captain of a team last season and today he's just sitting and watching his teammates play. Um, it has happened to him in Test cricket also uh, and I really feel sorry for Rahane. And then uh, let me take up uh, the Shimran Hetmeyer question. Uh, again, another good question. But you would ideally want Hetmeyer to bat up in the order so that he gets a feel. Another explosive batsman, somebody who can decimate the opposition at the tail end of the inning. I, I think really uh, at the end of the day, Vijay, there is no point in tinkering something that is really working well. And I think the Delhi Capitals are, have just found the level that they can play. And uh, in fact, Ashwin says there is room for improvement. Let's watch what he has to say. I think we've got, uh, we've got a pretty good side and everybody is putting their hand up. And uh, I thought initially we were a bit uh, rusty getting into the tournament. And even for me, it's been like five games for me to get my first four overs out. It's been a, quite an interesting year. Uh, came really charged up and wanted to do, I mean, got off to a splendid start. And then I just bowled four overs for the first time today. So, interesting. Everybody is uh, chipping in and I still think uh, the biggest positive is a lot of room for improvement is still there. So, I think we will get there at the back end of the tournament. It's time now to discuss tonight's match. It's Mumbai Indians versus Rajasthan Royals. Mumbai Indians on a roll. Rajasthan Royals seems to be struggling just that little bit. Uh, does look like Mumbai Indians will start odds on favourites for this game. Mumbai Indians have to start as favourites, and uh, because the fabulous batting lineup they have, or uh, the till number six, uh, 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 each batsman can take the game away on his own. And Rajasthan Royals. Uh, 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 they haven't been at their best. Uh, a lot will depend on Smith. He has to get runs tonight. And Sanju Samson, uh, he had those two glorious innings at the start of the tournament. Or was it three? I forget because there are so many matches on. Very hard to keep track. I have to be very honest about that. Uh, Sanju Samson has to be scoring as well for Rajasthan Royals. Like most teams, uh, they are dependent on their top three batsmen. And uh, Smith and Sanju Samson will have to shoulder the burden tonight. Uh, we would like more viewers to come back and ask us questions. Uh, we want to be interactive. We want to place our experience at your disposal uh, and see what we can offer you. It'll be great to have you participating in it a little bit more. Thank you very much, Vijay. It was a wonderful conversation. I enjoyed it very much. I hope to catch up with you tomorrow morning. Thank you, you very much. Have a good day. <laughs>